What's up guys and welcome to One Take. I'm Gil and today we're talking about biohackers, episode two titled Secrets. This video will of course have spoilers through episode two, but I haven't watched beyond that, so no spoilers for episode three onward. Before I go into the highlights, just overall thoughts on the episode. I thought episode one was a solid start to the series, but episode two for me, disappointed. The things that I was worried about watching the first episode, I thought only grew this episode. I was worried that the overarching mystery of the show would undercut some of the character development and undercut some of the tension, which I thought it did this episode. For example, there are points where we're meant to worry about Mia's safety. For example, as Dr. Lorenz gets closer and closer to figuring out who Mia is and testing Mia's DNA, but the threat is so vaguely defined and so mysterious that I didn't viscerally feel much of that tension beyond just being curious where things are going to go. Also, I mentioned the lack of character development. We get a little bit for Mia and a little bit for Dr. Lorenz, but not much for anybody outside of that, and at times that caused me to disconnect from the show. For example, when we see Mia at the beach with her roommate and Jasper plus his roommate, I found myself wondering, why am I watching all this? Besides Mia in that scene, everybody else felt to me almost like non-player characters in a video game where I'm not overly interested in what happens to them. Also, I liked in episode one that they started to hint at something more to Dr. Lorenz, where we see what some of her motivations are, what some of her struggles are, but here she felt more like an outright villain and therefore less interesting. Overall, I was entertained by the episode, but was kind of bummed it didn't rise above that. Anyway, let's get into the highlights of the episode, but first, just a quick reminder if you're enjoying these videos to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. We get a few more flashbacks this episode to Mia as a child. We see Mia's father threatening to sue someone and arguing with someone. It appears to be the doctor who worked on their son, and although her face is obscured, I'm assuming it's Dr. Lorenz. And if it turns out that it is Dr. Lorenz, I'm going to wonder why they decided to keep it a mystery and obscure her face here. This is part of what I was getting at in my earlier comment about the threat being sort of vague. If you want Dr. Lorenz to be the villain, then I think we should see some of what she's done to Mia in the past to make her such a threatening figure. Later, we also see the car accident that killed Mia's parents, and we get a quick and distant view of the person who chased them and caused the accident. To me, from a distance, it looked like Dr. Lorenz. Maybe it'll turn out I'm wrong, but for right now, to me, it feels a little bit like mystery, just for the sake of mystery and felt a little bit odd. Also, I've mentioned a couple of times that I felt like Mia's roommates haven't gotten much development, but if you pay close attention this episode, they do at least get names. We find out the biohacking guy is named Ole and the party girl is named Loda. Now, one of the world building elements I have enjoyed in the first couple of episodes is the idea that biohacking has become a part of everyday life and has entered the culture. There are YouTube stars who biohack themselves. I can imagine a scenario where the series would have begun with on screen text saying something like, The year is 2030. Genetic modifications are commonplace. They don't tell us that, they just sort of show it in dribs and drabs and we get the idea. I do wish they would take the idea more seriously. Mainly in this episode, I thought it was played for laughs. You see Ole sort of performing surgery on himself. There's a joke about how they spent weeks getting blood out of the carpet the last time he did this. So it's mostly played for laughs. I like it in theory. I wish they took it a little bit more seriously. The main arc of this episode is, of course, that Dr. Lorenz, as part of her clinical trials, takes some of Mia's DNA. And ultimately, she's going to be comparing that DNA to all the DNA in her database, which will reveal Mia's true identity and give everything up. So Mia has to stop Dr. Lorenz from testing that DNA. The whole setup for this felt pretty on the nose when Mia asks Dr. Lorenz, what are you doing with the DNA? She says, well, first we're going to compare it to old DNA. And then a couple sentences later, don't worry, Jasper isn't going to be testing the DNA until noon tomorrow. So that sets up the time limit on her mission. And then she very blatantly places them in view where Mia will know exactly where to sneak in later and swap out the DNA. 
So Mia goes to the beach with her roommate Loda, Jasper, and Jasper's roommate, then drugs Loda with the underwater breathing pills that also happen to make alcohol hit you harder so later she can steal her roommate's DNA sample. I think if the show were taking itself more seriously, there would have been a lot of tension in this scene. Not just because Dr. Lorenz might figure out who Mia is, but because Mia's backed into a corner where she needs to drug her friend and betray this person's trust. But I didn't really see any emotional struggle for Mia here, and they haven't developed the Loda character very much, so I didn't really feel bad for her because she doesn't register as a real character. Like I said earlier, to me, she felt sort of like an NPC or a non-player character in a video game where you wouldn't feel bad pickpocketing them or taking advantage of them in some way. Ultimately, Mia swaps Loda's DNA with her own with a couple of close calls. Jasper notices that Mia's name label on the vial of DNA is upside down, so when Mia took it off and put it onto Loda's DNA sample, she messed it up. And after the DNA is sequenced, Dr. Lorenz notices that what she sees in the DNA doesn't match what she would expect based on Mia's physical appearance but Dr. Lorenz seems to just write it off as either a mistake of the machine or an error in Jasper's testing process. Then Dr. Lorenz welcomes Mia to the team, so she has successfully gotten into Dr. Lorenz's good graces exactly where she wants to be. Mia sends a text to her anonymous confidant saying she's in, as in she's on Dr. Lorenz's team. A couple of thoughts here. First, I would have liked to have seen it take a little bit more for Mia to get onto the team. We know that Mia is smart. We know that she showed some confidence earlier in the episode based off Dr. Lorenz's feedback, and that's what got her foot in the door. But it seems like going from Mia having her foot in the door to officially being on the team, nothing in particular had to happen. She just had to show up on time, get her DNA tested. So I would have liked there to have been a little bit more of a struggle there. My other thought is, who is this anonymous person that Mia is texting with? My theory is that it's the man that Dr. Lorenz spoke with at the end of episode one. Based on the episode one credits, I believe his name is Andreas Winter. That theory is really just based on process of elimination. I can't see Jasper being the one to send those text messages. And unless there's going to be a major twist completely out of left field, it feels like Mia's roommates have nothing to do with the overarching plot that's happening here. But the guy that Dr. Lorenz met with at the end of episode one, we know he has a history with her. We don't exactly know why he went to meet with her. And he just seems like a mysterious person. So my guess is that he is the anonymous guy working with Mia. But we'll see as the rest of the season plays out. Anyway, I think we can wrap it up there. Like I said, I thought episode one was a solid start. Unfortunately for me, episode two felt like a step down and felt a little bit disappointing. But definitely let me know in the comments if you felt differently or had any other opinions. At this point, I'm gonna continue watching the series and unless one of the episodes is particularly good or interesting, I'll probably end up binging episodes three through six and then I'll do a full season review rather than going episode by episode. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified the next time we do a video. Thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.